so i came across a rather interesting problem uh, so we are given n distinct odd natural numbers a1 to an okay these are odd these are distinct and these are all natural numbers okay which are not divisible by any prime greater than 5 so none of these numbers is divisible by any prime number which is greater than 5 so we have to prove that this uh, the inverse summation of these numbers is less than 2 strictly less than 2 there is no equality here as well okay so what's the information that we are given here they are odd that is one good information they are distinct that is another information and they are not divisible by any prime greater than 5 so this means that the only prime factors of this of these numbers so a of i can be written as 2 raised to power uh, alpha i 3 raised to power beta i and 5 raised to power gamma i okay because no prime number greater than 5 divides it so there cannot be a factor of 7 because 7 does not divide this number right any of the numbers so this these can be divisible by either 2 3 or 5 but we are also given that these are odd numbers so 2 can also not be there so all of these numbers are of the format this so the numbers can be for example 3 they can be 5 they can be 15 they can be 25 uh, what else 25 into 5 into 9 45 so 225 right so this is the format of these numbers right so we have to prove that the inverse summation of these is this so basically we have to write this 3 is to power alpha i and 5 is to power बीटा आई आई विल ओके इसको अल्फा बोल दे इसको बीटा बोल दे यार राइट वेयर आई वेरीज फ्रॉम जीरो टू एन नाउ यू हैव टू अंडरस्टैंड दैट दिस नंबर विल बी ग्रेटर देन दिस ओके व्हाई नो वेट वी कैन नॉट से दैट बेसिकली दिस नंबर कैन बी रिप्रेजेंटेड इन दिस फॉर्मेट एंड आई एम सेइंग दैट दिस नंबर विल बी लेस देन summation of all the numbers of this format till n okay i will tell you why so 1 by 3 raised to power i 5 raised to power j where i and j vary from 0 to n okay and not necessarily all the numbers but but we'll see to infinity actually okay so basically i am we are saying that these numbers are of this format okay 3 raised to power something 5 raised to power something and their summation in some particular order okay Uh, we don't know which numbers are these but i am claiming that this number will always be less than the summation of all such numbers okay this sum represents the summation of all numbers of the format 3 raised to power i 5 raised to power j all till infinity i am summing all of them and since these numbers are a subset of these numbers right sare ke sare to powers nahi aa rahe na isme kuch numbers hume n numbers diye hain or distinct numbers hain right so here we are saying ki aise jitne bhi number hai sabka summation kar dalo sum the inverse of all the numbers that is what we are saying here so summation of all the numbers of a particular set will always be greater than summation of some of the numbers of the set right are we getting this and here we also have to put an equality sign because what if we are choosing all the numbers however n here it says so we are not given that n can be or cannot be infinity that we will see later in the problem but for now let's put an equality sign we can skip it because since this is a problem involving summation of natural numbers i don't think we are involving infinities here but still for the sake of correctness or for the sake of uh, you know being very particular let's put an equality sign so i am saying that this left hand side will always be less than all the sums of this possibility okay so what is this so let's try to understand what this is so this will be 3 to the power 0 5 to the power 0 plus 3 to the power 0 5 to the power 1 plus 3 to the power 0 5 to the power 2 okay till 1 by 3 to the power 0 5 to the power infinity got it plus um 1 by 3 to the power 1 5 to the power 0 plus 1 by 3 to the power 1 5 to the power 1 till infinity right basically i have i am partitioning this summation as first i take the value of i to be 0 and i sum all the j's 0 1 till infinity then i am taking the value of i to be 1 and then i am taking the value of i to be infinity or you know what uh, i think infinity can be a little bit confusing i will just put n here okay i will just put n here ki n tak summation kar raha hai theek hai 
because n is the number involved, right? If n is infinity, that is the problem of the examiner, right? Not our problem. So we are summing till n, and st still this equality will hold true. Inequality will hold true because the sum of these numbers till n will be less than the sum of all possible numbers of this format till n, right? So here, n will come. Because when you info, uh, when you involve infinities, it gets ugly. So I'm kind of skipping the whole infinity conundrum. So here we will get. So the first number one by three is equal to zero. We have uh, you know taken aside, and this is a summation of one plus one by five till one by five to the power n, which is a geometrical sequence. So the sum of this is one into r raised to the power n minus one upon uh, r minus one, right? So this will be around uh, one by So what will this be? One minus one minus five is to power n upon five is to power n into five by four, right? So this will be. नहीं यहाँ पे minus आएगा ना. So this will be five is to power n minus one upon five is to power n into four by five. ठीक है whatever. And we will get the same term. But multiplied by one by three, same term multiplied by one by three square and so on. So you take the same term outside. That will be five to power n minus one upon five to power n into four by five into summation of one plus one by three plus 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 so on. So we will simplify this along similar lines. So we will get three to power n minus one upon three to power n into two by three. Okay. So this is the equality that we get. That this summation, sorry, ha, this summation which we represent by this number will always be less than the summation of all possible numbers of this format, and the sum of all possible numbers of this format is this. So what is the maximum value of this summation? This one. What is the max maximum value of this? The maximum value of this will be achieved when we are summing till infinity, or we can also say in other words that this sum will always be less than the summation when the limit of n tends to infinity. So if you apply that. You will get that this and this will cancel. This and this will cancel. So we will be left with fifteen uh, upon eight, which is less than two, which is the original question. In fact, we got a stricter bound on this. We got fifteen by eight, which is an even better bound than two. And uh, actually, infinity is not relevant in this problem because even if n tends to infinity and somehow we are summing infinity, then also we can say that this number can maximum tend to the limit of 15 by 8, which is strictly less than 2. Okay, so uh, it was a pretty calculation-heavy problem, but it got solved using a sum of sequences, uh, using some a little bit of number theory as well. Okay, so pretty interesting problem. I think it's relevant for J and this is the kind of question which can come in J advanced also. So I will once again explain the problem. It's a little bit complicated. So basically, I am given distinct. Acha, there could be another issue with this problem. If distinct is not written, then you can always claim that these numbers are the same, and uh, that can lead to a few issues actually, right? If some numbers are repeated. But again, yeah, some if not some numbers are repeated, then you can always multiply a ki here because you don't know which number is occurring how many times. So that can lead to some issues, right? So what if the larger numbers uh, are occurring more often? Uh, so or sorry. Yeah, what if the larger numbers are occurring more often? Then you cannot apply this inequality strictly. We will have to check for that particular question, right? So distinct was also important here. Odd numbers was important because it helped us eliminate two raised to power i. However, two raised to power that can also be solved. It will be a bit more complicated calculation, but that can always be solved. And this question goes on to demonstrate that you can generalize this problem as well. So if you are given three, so you solve this question for two, right? You basically solved it case by case and then try to find the limits of this. Uh, thing, uh, and I suspect that if you add, let's say there was seven raised to power something uh, delta i, so that would probably be less than this number multiplied by one by six by seven, and if it was uh, the next prime number, eleven raised to power uh, I don't know epsilon i, then that would be one by ten by eleven. Uh, again, I'm not verified it, but I strongly suspect that this will be the case. So again, it's left uh, left as an exercise to the reader. Try this for. Seven as well. Let's say if we make this problem seven, we make this problem eleven. Does the same thing hold true? I think it will hold true, right? So this is another way of approaching higher. And actually, we got a generalized result because of this problem that uh, if there is a sequence of there is a you know series of distinct odd numbers which are not divisible by any prime greater than p i, then we can prove that this number will be less than 
वन अपॉन पी वन माइनस वन बाय पी वन इंटू वन बाय पी टू माइनस वन बाय यू नो ऐसे करके पी आई तक वेयर पी आईज आर लेस आर प्राइम नंबर लेसर देन द प्राइम नंबर इन द क्वेश्चन राइट सो दिस इज अटी जनरलाइज रिजल्ट विच आई स्ट्रॉन्गली सस्पेक्ट इज ट्रू बट अगेन आई विड आस्क यू टू प्रूव इट एक्चुअली राइट और डिस प्रूव इट so the main idea which we used here was that it is odd and these are distinct numbers so these can be written as prime factorization as power of 3 and 5 so we are saying that the sum of all the numbers is going to be less than the sum of all the possibilities of such kind of numbers right and what are the possibilities the possibilities are these so we just uh, factorize the terms separately we just separated the terms we got a nice number here in the middle and then we summed it up okay and then we got this particular result uh, but yeah I think there will be some issues if we solve it for. Uh, so let's say if we solve seven is to power zero also, okay? Yeah, there will be some issues here because this particular number will have a constant term. Then we will have three is to power zero. We'll have to try all combination of three and fives. But yeah, that can be solved. I think the number will be this only. If we solve for uh, seven, number greater than seven, I think we should get this. I think this should be the answer. And if we solve for eleven, I think the answer will be. Yeah, this is eleven. This is seven. Thirteen. Uh, if we include thirteen, that will be this. So it's a pretty interesting result, actually, right? Um, and do you think there is a chance of some kind of a combinatorial proof here? I think there might be. There might be a combinatorial approach to this because here we are kind of choosing. Like this can be seen in some way as a way of choosing some things. Again, I'm yet to think of it. Uh, maybe in some video or some note on my YouTube, I will update it if I come across. Or you can write in the comments if you come across something like this. But take care. This problem has been discussed for too long now. I hope you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more such Olympiad and JE physics, maths, and sometimes chemistry content. And I also teach for JE and uh, math Olympiad. So if you're interested in my JE courses where I will cover uh, physics, chemistry, maths, all three subjects, and math Olympiad also, so you can check in the description. All the details you will find there. Thank you for watching. Good luck.